Hi, it's Dr. Noel Williams, Optimal Health Associates, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. August 8th, 2021, COVID update. It's really painful, I think, for all of us, myself included, to still be having to talk about COVID. Um, so let's do it. The Delta variant. So there's so much information about the Delta variant that we've learned and know about. And then there's all the misinformation about the Delta variant which permeates um, media. So let's start with the basics. We're in a surge of cases. They're the Delta variant. It's 93% roughly of cases in the United States, and it's the predominant strain in the world. The thing that makes the Delta variant different is it's almost like having, we had SARS-1 in 2002, then we had COVID, in 2019, because it really started then. And then now we have Delta, and this variant is almost like SARS-3 because the mutations at the tip of the spike pro protein are so different. What happens is we have a 300% increase in infectivity, and then we also have a 23,000% roughly increase in replication. So it sticks easier uh, to receptors in your nasal pharynx and then in your lungs. And then two, it reproduces 23,000% faster, so you're more likely than for it. It has more of an opportunity to get going rapidly. So that's what makes it a totally different COVID and why the concepts of herd immunity abated. So that's our baseline. So let's look at population groups. So we know that if you're unvaccinated and you're older, especially if you're over 60, Delta is going to be worse. If you're over 40, it's going to be worse. But even if you're over 25, it's going to be worse and, and potentially 21. So we know a third of the hospitalizations are between 18 and 33 with, and it's more, you know, 23, 25 and older than 18 to 25. But there's more hospitalizations in younger people. We know that people are getting sicker rapidly, or rapider, <laughs> more rapidly because of the viral turnover. So those are all the things that are the basic concepts. So let's now start with kids. So the latest true data, and this is, you know, there's so much misinformation on the media, in the media. There are more cases in kids because there's just more cases. That, that is the thing to know. And but when we look at the data, and this is data that was published and given by an alliance of academic children's hospitals last Monday, which I received on Tuesday verbally and then got the written report on Wednesday from a physician health leader at Children's Hospital, it shows that there's been a tenfold increase in infections over the last four weeks. But so, interestingly, there's a, the hospitalization rate for the volume of cases has fallen by 60%. So what does that mean? It means that when you're just looking at it as a snapshot, yes, there's going to be some more kids in the hospital, but the overall, because there's just so many more, but the overall hospitalization rate for Delta is 60% lower than the alpha or the beta or the other ones because kids are not getting sick with it anywhere near like people have worried about. And that is the direct data from the children's hospitals in the United States. Now, are there exceptions where there's a few more cases getting admitted in, are there more cases in Arkansas and Florida? Yes, because there's so many more kids getting infected, but they're not getting as sick and it's a relatively still low risk event for them. And that's really important not to get sucked in. There is no data saying it's more serious. Frank Collins, the head of the NIH, said on Tuesday they didn't have any data, but he, data, he did a press conference knowing that he has this data that I just said. He intimated that it was much more deadly for children and more problematic. It actually isn't. That's the true data. They know that. They don't want to admit that. And there's reasons why, and I think in talking to one of my physician friends about it at length today, 
There is vertical transmission from children to adults with the Delta, meaning they can give it to adults, the other versions they really didn't. And so there may be a feeling that we need to really get the kids vaccinated because of that to limit the adult spread. But that's not an appropriate recommendation. The reason people aren't getting vaccinated is because they've chosen not to. And so vaccinating children without much risk seems a little specious if it's we don't know enough about the vaccine. And so let's talk about why that's important. Because we know right now that if you have the vaccine, you roughly have a two thirds of chance, a two thirds chance of getting infected with the Delta. We know that from the Israeli data, and it may be 50%, it may be 65%, but we'll, we'll go with 65%. We know half those people or a third are gonna be asymptomatic is the current data, and about half those people are gonna get mild infections. And 1% are gonna get more significantly infected. We're gonna go back to that, but now let's transition that to kids. So if you're 17 and younger, um, or you have children 17 and younger, their overall rate of getting ill with COVID in terms of significantly ill with COVID is 1% or less without vaccination. That is the bottom line. If you give them the vaccine, a third of them are gonna be immune a third of them are going to be asymptomatic. A third of them are going to get a mild infection. But in the end, 1% of them are still going to be at a risk for a more significant infection or slightly less. So it's equivalent numbers. So there's not a net benefit that I can see for a 17 and under. That's my interpretation of the data. The, the, the data. It's, I'm trying to think, why would we do this? What's the benefit for them? I can't see it that they are gonna actually get a significant change in their risk for serious disease. So why would you do it? That's where I am. I'm trying to rationalize recommending it to 17 and under. I wanna be able to say, hey, it's a good idea. I have tremendous pressure on me to say it's a good idea. <laughs> I, can't come, I can't come up with it as a good idea. I'm sorry. I, because the, it doesn't change anything. And probably, and there's, I'm not even gonna go into some of the theories on this, but that's the bottom line for kids, is we know there's harms to the vaccine, which are underreported. We know that kids do get cardiac events from it. There are other side effects, and we still ultimately don't know what the long-term ramifications are for a messenger RNA vaccine. So I don't think we potentially sacrifice any portion of the younger generation to save and this is where people will get mad at me, the irresponsible in the older generation. People who want to avoid getting COVID need to get vaccinated. It's that simple. So vaccines save lives, they save adult lives, so adults need to get vaccinated. Vaccinating kids to theoretically decrease the transmission rate of Delta doesn't make sense to me because Delta is gonna infect everybody at some point or another who isn't vaccinated. So. What's, I don't get it. So then let's talk about antibody, oh, ADE, ADE, whatever it is, antibody dependent enhancement, or basically the concept, this is another concept that's in, I think, the fake news. And it happens to be in more in the, in the alt-right news. And you know, as a conservative, it's always embarrassed that people who say they're conservative are dumb, but, and say they know more. But so antibody dependent enhancement of infection, which is the concept that you get the vaccine and the antibodies that you form essentially lead to you getting an enhanced infection from the vaccine. And there, there are several people trying to popularize this once again because people who get the vaccine can still get infected from, co from the COVID virus or the Delta. But the thing that the point is, you still have a 99%, roughly 93 to 99% reduction in serious illness, which is huge, huge. <laughs> so the vaccine is still protecting you from serious illness and death. It isn't making you more likely to get sick. It isn't making you more likely to spread it. If anything, it's gonna be less. So it's all made up stuff. What we have to focus on is the people who aren't getting vaccinated who are adults. And if we don't get them vaccinated, they're gonna get infected. 
once they're infected and they get through it, they're going to be immune. I actually saw an article in Yahoo that twice directly said that if you've been infected, you're immune. France recognizes that. Fauci has recognized it in his um, emails from last year, which he won't admit. So I like to break people into three groups. The unvaccinated, non-immune, so people who haven't gotten and haven't been vaccinated. The vaccinated, and then the prior infected who are immune. I mean, we just look at this anecdotally in my practice, but I think it's France recognizes it formally, we won't, but we've had one reinfection out of more than 70 plus in someone who's been prior infected. Half the people are vaccinated, half the people are unvaccinated. You are not seeing case reports repetitively across the world at all of the terrible illness occurring in people who haven't been vaccinated who had been infected. That data just doesn't exist across any of the variants so far. Eventually it might, it doesn't still. So that's the other take home message for me. I think yes, the prior infected need to still take their supplements just like everybody does, but the basis of the vaccine was looking at prior infected people's convalescent plasma two weeks after they recovered and aiming the AstraZeneca, the Pfizer, the Johnson & Johnson, and the Moderna to reproduce the antibody they had at the same level. So if they're not immune, none of us would be immune. So anyone who doesn't agree with that, I don't care. That's science, okay? There's never been an infection that didn't have a better immune response than a vaccine. It, I mean, it's just how it is. So that's kind of the summary. I don't know, Kim, if there's anything else I really need to talk about tonight, but I think Delta's gonna be here. If you haven't been vaccinated, please get vaccinated. I can tell you story after story after story of what we're hearing of, of direct people that I take care of, family members who are critically ill, a um, 42-year-old ventilator, a ventilated patient who is totally healthy right now, 47-year-old ventilated patient, totally healthy. We've had multiple people in their 30s die in the community now who are completely healthy with Delta. I mean, it is the real deal. You can choose not to get vaccinated or you can choose to get vaccinated, but all I can tell you is vaccines save lives. Get vaccinated if you're an adult because you don't know what's gonna happen when you get the Delta. And again, most people don't have access to care if you get infected. So you are, as the saying goes, SOL for trying to get anything to help prevent you from getting sicker with the infection until you have to get admitted to the hospital. You can get antibodies, but those are, again, a little bit harder to get right now. So it is reality. You need to, be, people need to know it. So take your zinc, take your multivitamin, take your D, take your fish oil, and take your melatonin. So that's it. I, I think we're gonna be okay. I think it's gonna go pretty fast. It's gonna be an ugly two months, and then hopefully we'll be better. I do think that some of these other variants may end up mattering, but if enough people get infected with Delta who haven't gotten vaccinated, hopefully this will come to an end. That's all we can hope for. But I mean, we're in, we're in a very crazy place now. So my final thought is vaccines save lives. I'm vaccinated, Kim's vaccinated, Hugo's vaccinated, and um, Nolan and Calvin are vaccinated in our family. Um, so, you know, we believe in the vaccine for adults. That's it. Take care, have a safe week.